micro front ends can be challenging and state management in a micro front end context can be kind of tricky. Which state manager to use, what state to store between the different micro front ends and what to store in the micro front ends themselves, how to architect it all. So what I'm hoping is that this video will give you some more information and help you understand the architectural options that you have for your environment. Hi, I'm Jack Harrington, a principal full stack engineer, and I've done a whole bunch of videos on this channel on micro front ends. And I've written a book with Zach Jackson around module federation. So in this video, we're going to take a look at a whole bunch of technologies. We're going to look at a mono repo solution, turbo repo, and see how that works with module federation. We're going to do both build time sharing of components as well as runtime sharing of components. It's really cool stuff. I'm excited. I can't wait to jump into it. But of course, before we get there, I just want to say thank you. This channel has recently gone to 50,000 subscribers, which is something that I was just hoping might happen by the end of 2022. And it's already happened in April. I'm just really ecstatic about it. And of course, I couldn't do it without you. So thank you so much for supporting this channel and all the work that I'm doing on it. All right. Without further ado, let's jump right into the code. So the topic for this week is gaming. So we've got three different sites here. We've got a game zone that has our two games on it. We've got a card picker game and a top number game. So let's try out this card picker game. You get five cards and I've got a score at zero right now. So I'm going to click on one of the cards and oh, my score went down to minus one, but I can play again. Let's see what am I doing any better? Oh, I got 10 there. Okay, cool. So my score is now stuck at nine. Awesome. And I can do this top number game. And in the top number game, I hit play and then I get this number keeps going up. Oh, and if I don't hit play and I don't hit take it by the time that it goes out, then I don't get I get minus one. But if I take it, then I get whatever that value is like four. So it's kind of like, you know, hey, do you want to go or stay? I don't know. Whatever. These are silly games, but they're cool. They're micro front ends. So basically, the idea is that we have an app shell here at the top. That's this header up here. You've got game zone. It's got the current person who's logged in. So that'd be me and it's got my current score. This is maintained in local storage. So each one of the different applications here is on a different port. So this is port 3000, port 3002 for top number and port 3001 for the game zone, which has both of these. And so the local storage is different between each one of those. You can log out, you can log in, you can only play games if you're logged in. So that's what the app shell is storing for us as state, it's storing who's logged in and what their score is. And then each one of these other applications, like 3000 is just the site for the card picker and 3002 is just the site for top number. And then those are both shared out as micro front ends. And this game zone kind of brings those all together. So I think from a, like a business perspective, you might think that like this card picker would have extra games or challenges. And this might be the little, exciting intro game to the card picker world of card picking. And this might have, uh, you know, somewhere other, this is the intro game to another world of top number applications. I don't know, whatever. So step one in building this out is we got to build out our mono repo. And to do that, I'm going to use turbo repo. This is a mono repo framework came out from Facebook. I think probably a year ago now, it's just a really nice, easy way to build out a mono repo. And it actually starts with a, starter kit that's actually kind of similar to what we want to do. It's got a shared React UI library and it's got two apps. It's actually a nice starting point for us. So let's build this out. And to do that, I'm going to go over here into warp. This is a kind of cool new terminal application that I've been playing around with. It's only on the Mac, but I, it's certainly interesting and worth a look. So I'm going to paste in here this MPX create turbo repo at latest hit return. And now I need to give it the name that I want for my directory. So I'll call this game zone and I'm going to use PM PM. All right. looks like we're all set up. Let's bring it up in VS code. Sorry, warp, but that's the last we'll be seeing of you. So at this point, I think I can do PM PM I to install any dependencies and then PM PM dev to bring up whatever the kind of out of the box stuff is. Let's take a look. It's got uh, localhost 3000 which has a web and then localhost 3001, which has docs and then a button that says boop. All right, let's go take a look and see in our code how this is all laid out. 
Okay, so we've got two directories in here. We've got the apps directory that has the docs app in it, and we got the web app in the web directory. Um, they're both web apps, which is, I guess, a little bit confusingly named, but that's fine, whatever. And then down in here in packages, we've got some packages, and those are shared between the apps. So in this case, we've got the UI library, which has a button in it. And that's where our boop comes from. So this is the button that is shared between those two applications. It says boop. That's what's in this UI library and all that index does is just share out that button. And then there's a, a shared TypeScript configuration. I think it's shared. Yeah. ES lint configuration, whatever. So yeah, it's pretty simple. And then over here, over, let's say like, how do you consume this UI? Well, let's go over here into docs and then you can see over here in package JSON, you've got a dependency on UI from the workspace. And so that, that gives you that dynamic linking, right? So anything, any changes you make in UI are going to be visible quickly without any kind of build or deploy to anything inside that mono repo that's going to use them. So in this case, that would be docs and web. Now let's go here over here to pages and we can see, oh, wow. Okay. We bring in button from UI. We put up a div and H1, you know, not really all that much to it. Okay. So, Step number one to building all this out, I want to go and build out that app shell, which would be the header at the top of the page, as well as our shared state. And we'll talk about the different shared state options uh, as we go. So let's go over here to our UI pack. I'm just going to keep it in the UI package and we will go into that directory and then we'll start adding some dependencies. So I'm going to go into packages UI. And within that, I'm going to do PMPM. If I can always remember PMPM, I'm so used to doing yarn that I'm trying to unlearn that a little bit. I don't know. Okay. So for state management, I'm going to use a library called Zustand. And why am I using Zustand? Well, it's very lightweight. It's very easy to use. It has a unidirectional model similar to Redux. So it's pretty easy to reason about. And it's not particularly tied to React. It's a lot easier in the React context, but it's not exclusively React. You can use it outside of the React context by just doing get state, set state, and subscribe on it. So if you've got Angular or vanilla JavaScript or something else that's going to want to consume it, it can do that as well. If you don't have any React in the ecosystem at all, I might think about something like RxJS in that case, in that it doesn't have any connection to React at all. I think Zustan actually has an implicit connection to react since it actually does have hooks internally if you decide to use it as a hook. But uh, okay, so moving on, what are we going to use for our UI? Well, I'm going to use a library called Mantine. Mantine, I'm not quite sure. I used this in the last video and nobody said I said it wrong. So I'm going to go with Mantine. Uh, it's very similar to like a material. All right, so those are now installed. Now I'm going to go over and I'm going to create our shared state. So in Zustand, you create a custom hook. So we'll name it like you would a custom hook. We'll call this one use app shell .ts. And I'll bring in create from Zustand, which you can see is comes in at a whopping 916 bytes. Pretty nice. And this is the store that we're going to create. The store is has a user on it. That's user can either be defined string in this case like jack or whatever or no meaning you're logged out and then your score which would be just a number and then you can set to user meaning basically log in uh, and then also add to score so to create our use app shell you run create and you give it the type so in this case store and then you give it a function and that function takes a setter and you start building things out. So let's just start off with user as null, score as zero, and then we'll implement set user. Thank you, GitHub Copilot, for that. It'll take a user, and when you do set, you get given the current state. You don't actually have to go and do that. So I'm just going to go and do set user here. And then we'll do add to score. And this will take an amount. And then we'll set the score to the current score. So we actually do need the case, the state in this case, so we need that state. And that's it for our shared state for what we actually want to store between the different micro front ends. And, and this is actually really important. When it comes to micro front ends, you want the shared state between them to be as small as possible. I recommend the user identity, 
maybe the jot if you're going to be doing some API work. And then if you're doing, say, e-commerce, maybe the cart count, and maybe the items in the cart, or in this case, if you're making a game, the current game score, the kind of thing that absolutely every micro front end needs, but nothing more. I've gotten a lot of questions about like, how do I go and do Redux, you know, merging of stores? And I was just like, no, please don't do that. Because there's really no reason that you need to do that. Right? Redux in particular, Redux dev tools allows you to have multiple Redux stores on the page. And so you can have one for every micro FE, and then you have that one store that would have, again, the user identity, maybe the jot, and some very high level stuff, like in this case, the score. Now I do want this to use local storage and be persisted. So I'm gonna bring in some middleware in this case, persist. And to do that, all I do is I just add on persist here. I give it again, the store type, I basically put it in the middle like that. And then I got to give it a name. In this case, I'm going to call that name app shell. And that's it. So this is going to store the current state in local storage. That means it's, you know, when we do refresh on the page, we don't have to log in every time. This is just a nice little way to do that. And plus, hey, it's built right into Zushan. So awesome. Now, the next thing I want to build is the shell. So let's go and first off, kill this button. And I'm going to go make a TSX file in here called shell.tsx. And this is going to store our shell. So we're going to bring in from React, React. And we'll also bring in from the Mantine core, we'll bring in app shell along with header, title, box, button, and, and uh, the theming system. And then we need that use app shell. So I'm going to go over here into index and I'm going to e export the use app shell from that file. And then I'm going to bring it into shell through the index just like so. And then we'll start defining our shell. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring in our state. So that'll be the user and the score and the set user, because we're going to have a login button and that's going to be able to set that user to both myself, I guess, or whatever, or null if I log out. And then I'm going to start creating that app shell. So we will have a little padding and we'll make it kind of darkish. And then within there, we will put our children. And that's good enough, but what I really want is that header. And obviously right now it's just gonna be blank. So what I'm gonna do is bring in a header as well. And this is just gonna be a nice blue header. And we get given a title. So that's gonna come in as a property. And I'll just go and put that title in here as a title. And then I'll give myself a little bit of a spacer. So you got the title on one side and then you got a flex box grow segment that gives you some space. And then we need a way to log in. So we'll put in a login button here. And then basically be, if we are not logged in, if we don't have a user, then put in a login button. And when we are clicked on, then just to set the user to Jack, you can put in whatever you want. And again, all of this code is available to you for free on GitHub so you can play with it as I'm talking. And then when you're not logged in, we wanna be a little more complicated. We wanna show the current user and the score as part of a title and then have a logout button. And, and that's really it. That is our entire app shell. Obviously yours is gonna be more complex in production, but that's basically the two fundamental pieces of sharing of the MFE context that we want. The You want the visual shell, that is the thing that every application is going to have that those micro front ends will drop into, that's the shell. And then you've got that shared state, which is the use app shell hook that we just created using Zustan. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is export this shell from the shell, and we're good to use it. So let's go over here and just try it out. Let's go in, into the Docs app and see if we can use this. So I'll go over here to Pages, Index, and we no longer have that button, but we do have Shell. So let's put in Shell here, and we'll just get rid of the button. Don't need that. And we'll put in Title, and we'll call this out, whatever. What is it, Docs? Sure, why not? Okay. And let's do that. And then let's go back up a directory and then do that PMPM PM dev again to see that it worked or if it worked. All right, let's take a look. Is it docs? Yeah, docs is on 3001. Haha, <laughs> not bad. Okay. A uh, little bit of interesting funkiness on the CSS, but I'm guessing that's just because it's there's some additional CSS in there from before. I don't know, whatever. I'm not too worried about that. Okay, but in reality, I'm not really interested in either of these applications. I wanna go create three applications that are absolutely new. So I'm gonna go into this apps directory and I'm just gonna delete those things. RMFR, docs, and web, goodbye. 
Okay, and then we're gonna go and create three new applications in here. We'll create them one at a time. The first one I'm gonna do is we're gonna build the card picker application. So that's gonna have that five card game. So we'll create that React app with card picker. I'll say yes, wanna install, create React app. Okay, it looks good. Let me get rid of this file and go back over here and start taking a look at our card picker. And so for one thing we want to do right away is we want to go and bring in that UI library. So I'm going to go over here into the dependencies and add that from workspace. Cool. And now theoretically we should be able to go over here to app.tsx and get rid of a lot of this stuff. But we'll just say import the shell from the UI and then wrap this thing in that shell, give it a title card picker and card picker woohoo and now let's try it out but it, obviously it's not connecting yet that's I think because we have to do the uh, PMPMI at the top level there get everything connected okay so now let's go and try it again ah, looks like it's happy there so let's do uh, PMPM dev see how it works Okay, so it didn't work. Well, why is that? Well, looking down here, we actually, our scripts just say start. So if we just change that to dev, how about that? Does that work? PM, PM dev again. Okay, looks like it's going to start up our create react app. And let's see. Okay, so we got some problems. So after some extensive investigation on my side, uh, the structure of this library is a little bit too simplistic. It didn't get, it doesn't have all the infrastructure that it needs. And the easiest way to kind of bring that up and into it is to use TS up. So I'm going to go into the packages UI and then I'm going to PM PM add TS up. And then I'm going to add some scripts for build and dev. So what dev is going to do is run that TS up function on the index.tsx file, which is right there. And it's going to format stuff as common JS. It's going to set the watch flag. So that's watching the code and then it's going to say that we have an external for react. And one more thing I need to do is say that we have a module output. There we go. Index.mjs. And let's try it again. So let's go back up to two directories and then do PM PM dev again. And let's see if it works. Okay, great. It works. Awesome. All right. looks like it's still got that logout issue. Let's go check that out. Okay. Shell and okay. Ah, all right. So let's try this out. I don't have that as a flex box. So let's see if that works. Flex. Ah, perfect. Okay. And that shows you the, the power of having it in the mono repo. It's a instantaneous refresh in dev mode. Again, I mean, these are build time dependencies in reality, right? When you build and deploy this thing, they are build time dependencies, but in dev mode, you're getting that watch behavior and you're getting that automatic updating. So that's very nice, very turbo. So that's cool. So the next thing I want to add is the actual game. And I'm not going to go into detail really on the game itself. We're just kind of kind of bring it in almost wholesale, but you can have a look at it on in GitHub. It's really not the point. Uh, the point really here is about the micro front ends. So uh, let's go into apps car picker. And then I'm going to bring in some dependencies. So I'll bring in that Mantine stuff that we did. Mantine and Tine hooks and Mantine core, as well as Lodash. Uh, we're going to shuffle the cards. And rather than kind of write my own shuffle, I'll just use the shuffle that's out of Lodash. And then I'll bring in the types for Lodash. And now I'm going to go create my file. So I'm going to go create the card picker. So go over here into source and create a new file called card picker. TSX and we'll bring in react as well as you state we'll bring in some stuff from Mantine, the box paper and all that we'll bring in shuffle from Lodash, and we'll bring in our use app shell because you know, as you click on a card you're going to be getting a score and so we need that add to score functionality in use app shell which is cool it's basically like the mfe its connection to the shell is hey i'm i'm a game my, my point is to be a game and if you win i'm going to add score for you Okay, so now we need to define our different cards. So we're going to have cards for plus 10, plus 5, plus 2, minus 1, minus 2. I'm not a casino owner. I'm guessing this is not a good game for a casino since you will win more often than you will lose. Now let's go and define out our card picker. So we're going to have our current set of cards where we shuffle the options using that shuffle low dash function. 
And that's going to give us our cards. And then we're going to have a number that says which card we've played. That's going to allow us to kind of highlight the card once we've clicked it. And then we're going to bring in the user state as well as add to score. So what is the user state going to say? Well, the user state is going to be either null or a name. So if it's not null, then we want to just bail out. So if there's no user, then just return null. Otherwise, we want to return our card picker game. So I'm putting paper there. OK, that seems like a decent way, place to start. So let's try this out. And we'll go over here to our app.tsx, and we'll bring in the card picker. And we'll instantiate it down here. And then we'll go back up some directories and then that, do that PM, PM dev. OK, it looks like it behind the scenes there, it actually did work. We're getting this weird ESLint configuration issue, and this is what another one of these gotchas. So ESLint kind of freaks out in this scenario, and the best thing that I found to do is just disable it, honestly. In dev mode, just we can just disable it. So let's go and do that. I'm going to go over here to our package JSON, and I'm going to say that we should disable the ESLint plugin. So let's try this again with our ESLint plugin disabled. And that only matters during dev time. So I think this is fine. It just means that you're not going to get dev hinting around ESLint. All right, cool. So let's actually start building out our game here. So I'm going to lay out the list of all the cards by putting them in a box. So we'll have a box that has a grid layout in it. And then within that, I'm going to lay out all of our cards. Each one of those in turn is going to be a box. Box is basically a div. Uh, and then in man time, you can say padding and then give it a value. In this case, like five, make, give, make it, give it a little bit of padding around the card. Uh, and then we're going to basically have just yeah, some styling of the border radius is of the cards and all that. And then when I click on one, it's going to add that value to of the card to the score and then say that it, it set we played that card. And then this background is just going to change based on whether we played or not. So let's let's uh, take a look. OK, cool. So now if I click on a card minus one and I go to minus one. Awesome. So you can see now that we have we're using that same instance of use app shell between the app and the shell, which we would expect, right? Because it's just a shared library. So you got that good connection there. If I were to do five, for example, it would go up by four. Of course, what we really want is we want this to actually kind of say we've played already. So of course, what we really want is we want to have a button that basically indicates whether we should play again. So let's hit that. OK, play. Yeah, play again. Cool. Yeah, we shouldn't be able to hit click it again, but whatever, it's fine. OK, so cool. So we've got our first game. Awesome. But now what we want to do is we want to share this game with another app called Game Zone, which we're going to create. And there's a couple of different ways to do that, right? We could extract the game into a, a shared module, which I'll do at the end to show you the difference between these. Or we can use module federation to share this piece of code, this card picker at runtime. So that's the way they're going to start. So the first thing we're going to do is reconfigure this application to share out that piece of code. So I'll go over and go back to our terminal. And then in our terminal, I'm going to go into that apps card picker. And I'm going to bring in Cracko. And what Cracko allows you to do is modify the configuration of your create react app app like the Webpack configuration, for example, which is where module federation lives. And that's what we're going to be using to share this code between these applications. So what we need to do is go over in here and first say that we want Cracko instead of React scripts. So we'll just put in Cracko there. And then we need to go and create a Cracko RC file. Remove this package lock, don't need that. But I'll go up here to new file and create a Cracko rc.js file. And that's just a JS file that exports a function. And that function returns an object, which has a bunch of different configurations on it. In this case, we're going to exclusively deal with the Webpack stuff. So the first thing we want to do is configure the output path of the Webpack. So then we're going to set that to auto. And this is important because this module federation system is actually going to package up essentially a manifest of the code that we are sharing. We're going to name that remote entry, and it's going to have pointers to all the components, in this case, just the one component that we're going to share. And this public path is going to be used when we load that component. And so it has to be set to auto. And in this case, the default value of this public path doesn't work, so we need to set it to auto. Okay, then we need to bring in our module federation plugin. 
And this plugin is built into Webpack 5. That has been around for quite a while now. And then we got to add a plugin to the list of plugins. And that'll be our module federation plugin. And then we need to name the host module that we're federating and we'll just call it ourselves, which is card picker. And then we need to give it a file name for that manifest, which in this case we'll use remote entry, which is pretty much the standard. And then we need to say what we're going to expose. So we create a key here called exposes and we give it the different things we want to expose. So in this case, we want to expose card picker, which is in source card picker. So that means we're basically going to give that out. Now, of course, card picker uses Mantine and Lodash. So how is that going to work? Well, what module federation does is it has another key called shared, which allows you to specify the libraries that you want to share. So the first thing I'm going to do is just bring in the, all of the dependencies, not dev dependencies, just regular dependencies and add them to this shared key. So we'll get the depths up here and then we'll just destructure the depths down in here. Now that'll do Lodash and React and all that stuff, but some of these libraries have to be handled a little bit differently. Like in the case of our UI library, we only want one instance of that at a time. So we need to specify that it, it needs to be a singleton. And that similar logic applies to React and React DOM. Okay, this looks pretty good. I'm pretty satisfied with this. Let us try it out. So I'm gonna go back up again to the root directory and then do npm dev. And now it blows up. So why does it blow up? Well, we, if we look at the console, we get this interesting error. So I'll move it across here. So shared module is not available for eager consumption. So when you move to a dynamically loaded system, like module federation provides, you need to give Webpack a little bit of breathing room to load asynchronously some of these modules. So what's happening is we've turned that card picker essentially into a remote module. So the app is consuming it internally as a remote module and therefore it needs to have time to go and set that up. So what I need to do is essentially bootstrap the app. So what I need to do is I'll go over here to our index.tsx and I'm gonna go and copy this and then replace it with import and give it a file name of bootloader. And then I'm going to export uh, basically a, a default that's meaningless just to get rid of the linting issues. And now I'm going to go create a file called bootloader.ts. And I'm going to bring that out. I'll call it TSX actually. Got to get the JSX extensions in there. And I'll also export out of this one just to get rid of any issues, the default value. And what this asynchronous import does is give that Webpack runtime some time to breathe and import any other asynchronously loaded stuff like our card picker. So let's hit save again. And let's see, did it work? It did, awesome, cool. And so now we're back to working, which is great, but We've also got a new file in here. So if I go over there and I do that remote entry, now I've got this manifest file. So on port 3000 is this list of all of the shared modules, which in this case is just the card picker for this application. So let's now go and make a new create react app and also use Krako on it to create a consumer for this federated module. All right, well, let's go clean up a bunch of these files here. And then I'll go back into apps and we'll do again PMPX with that create react app. And in this case, I will use the name game zone and again, template TypeScript. Okay. We're good. So let's use some of the things that we've learned so far. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go into our game zone and we need to install Krako. So let's do that. PMPM add and then Krako. And then I'll go back up to the top directory. Looks good. And now let's go and make some tweaks. So I'm going to go and grab a few things. Let's see. So out of the package JSON here, I'm going to need that disable ESLint plugin. Sure. We'll take that and go over to game zone and start hacking on its package JSON. So we'll need our UI. So I'll put it in that UI is going to be on workspace. That's going to give us our app shell and our use app shell. And then down here, I'm going to bring in that disable ESLM plugin. I'm going to 
replace these React scripts with Cracko. And I'm also gonna put this on port 3001. Cool. And uh, yeah, okay, I think that's probably pretty good. So now let's get rid of our package lock. Don't need that anymore. Go in here to our app.tsx. Actually, I'm gonna change this to JSX because we don't have typing for these remote modules. That's actually a whole thing. We're gonna get another video coming up here pretty soon around TypeScript typing. Uh, there's a new cool approach, but Module Federation doesn't package the TypeScript, it packages the, JS, the JS files, so you don't get those types. So I'm just gonna use JS, make it simple on myself. And let's see, so I'm gonna import that shell from the UI. And then we'll wrap the app in that shell. Let's see. Ta -da, title is Game Zone. And then we need that crackorc.js. So I'm going to go and just copy that. Crackorc.js. Paste that in there. And this is going to be called Game Zone. Remote entry makes sense. We're not going to expose Card Picker, we're going to consume it. So, how do we do that? Well, we're going to go over here and we're going to say remotes and we're going to give it the list of remotes that we have. And the only remote that we currently have is card picker. And so it's going to be card picker. And then we're going to give it the location of that remote entry. So it's going to be localhost 3000 remote entry.js. Okay, cool. So this is basically saying we got this library sitting out here, card picker, and it's at this location. So let's copy that. And then we'll go back over here to our app.jsx. And then we'll import card picker from card picker slash card picker. And I think I was exporting it as a named export. So let's do that. And then I'll put it in here. And then finally, the last thing we need to do is make sure that this is bootstrapped because again, it's not going to be bootstrapped by default. So I will copy and paste this into a bootloader. Paste that in there, do some sort of default, cool. And then over in the index.tsx, I will import that bootloader and export the default again. And uh, let's see, oh, one last thing I think would be to go over here and make sure that on our package.json, let's see, start, yeah, that means we dev think we've got it. I think this is, should be about it. So let's try it out. PMPM dev. Okay. So now we've got two apps. That's a good sign. So we've got the original car picker. That's cool. Uh huh. Okay. Can't resolve UI. Ah, uh -huh. okay. Fair enough. So that, because we need to do that PMPM I at the top level to do that linking that turbo repo linking and let's run it again. It's close, very close for a first try. That was really good. Okay, it looks like 3001's doing well and Game Zone's looking well. Awesome. So this is the exact same thing. It's on Game Zone. And, you know, let's change out the uh, the look of it a little bit. We'll go over here to that app.jsx and we'll just make it like, we're going to put two of them side by side. So let's go and have a div in there and we use another grid because I'm a big fan of grid. And give it a template columns of one of our one of our, and then a little bit of gap. Sure, cool, nice. Okay, so now it's basically ready to go side by side. But here is the cool part, right? So we've got that Jack sixteen currently, and let's click on this. And up, oh, cool, Jack twenty one. So that's why that singleton over in the Webpack config was just so important, so critical. So let's take a look over here. So you got the crack ORC, and then down here, we registered that UI as a singleton. And that's really critical, because what that means is that tells Webpack there's one and only one UI, and so there's only gonna be one instance of that use app shell hook, and therefore everybody's gonna say, share the same in-memory version of UI. And that means that if, we had a bunch of different pieces of micro FE in here. They would all use that shared state. And I picked Zushtan for that shared state because it is just so easy to put together that 
schema and get that all working together. And also, of course, if you had micro fees are written in different systems like Angular or Vanilla or Vue, they could still use get state and set state to talk to that app shell. Okay, so let's try it one more time. Let's go and build out a the top number app. So again, I'm going to go into apps. I'm going to go and do that PMPX. And this time I'm going to call it top number. Okay, looks good. Now we've got three directories, car picker, game zone, top number, and let's start our hackathon again. So again, we'll get rid of a package lock. We will go into that directory, top number, we'll add Cracko. And while we're doing that, we'll go into game zone. Let's see, I need a couple of things out of there. I need that disable ESLIN plugin and the port. Okay, cool. Package JSON again. Zip down here. Port 3002 this time. Crackle, crackle, crackle. Cool. We'll do UI again from that workspace. And because we actually are going to build some UI in here, we need the Mantine stuff as well. So let's add. Mantine, don't need Lodash in this case. All right, looking good. Let's go get a crack ORC, this time from, yeah, the same card picker because this is also gonna be a remote. So let's create a new file here, crack ORC.js, and we'll call this one top number. We're not going to do anything at this point. We don't have a, a game yet, so we'll just keep that as empty. Just want to make sure it works and fires up. So let's go take a look over here in our app.tsx file, and we'll do that shell thing. So we'll import the shell from UI. Cool, looks good. And we'll wrap the app in the shell, title it top number. Shell, cool. And let's see. So is there anything else I needed to do? I don't think so. So let's go back up to the top level and see how we went. We'll do PM, PM, I. PM, PM, dev. Okay. Oh, you know what it was? Ah, I missed it. Okay. One more thing. Package JSON. Dev be start becomes dev. Duh. Okay. Yeah, all right. Fine. It's always something. All right. Here we go. There you go. Come on. Three apps. Oh, I forgot to bootload it too. Okay. So that's why it's going to blow up this time. Let's see. All right. All right. Looks like 3000 is good. 3001 is good, but this guy blew up. Let's see. Yep. That shared module issue okay so that's what you know when you see that shared module thing you forgot to do your bootstrapping so let's go over and bootstrap it so let's go index.tsx and we'll bootstrap it export def wow that's just import right now okay bootloader cool and let's go make ourselves a bootloader All right. Hey, nice. Okay. So now we've got a top number. You know what? I'm, I actually want to go and spend just a second here like changing out the index.html file so we can at least see it in the toolbar. So we'll go over here to public index and we'll scroll down here. This is in card picker. So was it card picker? Yeah, this is going to put it in the title bar. Uh, game zone index. Cool. Call that game zone. And finally, we'll put over here in top number, we'll put it in there for top number is in the title bar. Okay. And look at that. Okay, so now I've got our three apps. Everything seems to be working. Cool. So now let's go and create our top number game. So I'm going to create a new file in here called top number. And this is going to have our top number MFE in it. So we're going to bring in from React, use effect and use state. We're going to bring in some stuff from the Mantine core. We're going to bring in app shell because we want to be able to add score as well as look to see if we're logged in. We got a, a 
number picker function that just gives me a number between two and 12. Then we're gonna set up our top number component and it's gonna have the number that we picked. We'll start off at zero, but when you hit play, it'll pick a number. Whether we're playing or not, a Boolean. And then we're gonna have current value and that's gonna be between zero and that top number. And when we hit that top number, then you've lost the game and you'll get a point deleted. So let's go and add in that mechanic using an use effect. All right, so our use effect is going to trigger whenever we have a change to playing, top number, current value, or add to score. And so if we're playing, then we set a timeout. And that timeout is, I think, 500 milliseconds. And when that timeout goes, then we see what the current value is. If the current value is less than top number, then we add one to it, right? We go on to the next number. If we have exceeded the top number, then womp, womp, we lost. So we add a negative one to your score, and we set the current value back to zero, and we set that we're playing as false. And basically we just reset a timer each time. You can do this on an interval, but I think the logic's a little bit easier when we're doing a set timeout like this. And then we need to say, well, if we don't have a user, then we're not gonna do any of this at all. And then we're gonna start building out our JSX for our UI. So we're gonna have a paper just like we had before with top number in it. And if we're not playing, then we wanna have a button that says play. And when you click it, we set playing to true and we pick a top number. And that's gonna trigger that use effect, which is gonna set that timeout and get the, the game rolling. And if we are playing, then we want a different button and that's the, the take it button or snag it. Let's just say snag it. And that's gonna say, okay, I want the value that it's at. I don't think it's gonna be higher because I might lose. Okay, so let's save that out and let's try it. Let's uh, take a look. Let's go over here to app.tsx and we'll bring in our top number. And let's try it out. Okay, looks good. And let's play. One, two, three, oh, cap, cool. So I got three points there. It's a dumb game. I Whatever, it's fine. Okay, make it better. Have some fun. Okay, so let's go over to that crack RC, and now we're gonna go and share that out. And we do that by exposing it. So I'm gonna go and put in here top number and give it the source of top number. Now I do have to restart the server for this. So I'll restart it now. Again, PMPM PM dev. And now when I look over at top number, I should be able to do remote entry on that and see that it's got, oh, okay, cool. We're, we are ready to go. So now with that remote entry, I can go back over here to our game zone app and then go into our Cracko. And now we wanna get top number. from that one. So top number at 3002. Let me just make sure that that's the right name. Did I put the right name on that? Cracko RC over in top number. Did I say that? Top number, yes. Okay, I think we're good. So hit save and then go over here to source, go into app.jsx. And this time I'm gonna get top number. From top number. And I'll put that down here. Awesome. And then one more time for the PMPM PM dev and away we go. So both of these should work, but the one we really care about is this game zone because now it's dynamically loading both the card picker and also that top number. And it worked. Awesome. Very cool. Okay, great. Okay. So now I've got a nice runtime sharing between these applications. So why is this important? Well, imagine that you had three different teams here. You've got the game zone team, you've got the card picker team, you've got the top number team, and each one of those teams wants to be able to deploy their applications independently. I get it. It's not a huge application, right? Of course, this is not the case here, but imagine like a really big application. So all of those teams want to be able to deploy independently. This allows them to do that, right? In a build time system, if you were to go and change top number, then you'd have to redeploy both the top number app and also the game zone app. But in this case, all you need to do is redeploy top number because game zone is consuming this component on the fly dynamically in the browser. So that's a huge value, but it's also a huge risk because what happens if top number has a bug in it and that bug only shows up when you embed it in another application. You could use an error boundary to make sure that that doesn't happen. 
But you can also just avoid that problem, that runtime risk by using a build time dependency. So that's really what I'm talking about here. You have two different ways to go when it comes to a micro front end. You can use a build time dependency or you can use a runtime dependency like this one. And I did the runtime one first, not because it's actually easier, but because it's actually easier for me to demonstrate this one first and then demonstrate how to do this as a build time dependency which is actually really nice because we've got a good infrastructure for that going because we've got a mono repo here. So let's now go and take our runtime code and turn it into a build time dependency. All right, so now I'm gonna create a new branch. So check out dash B and we'll call this build time depths. All right, cool. Now we've got our nice little branch there. And now we're gonna start refactoring this and making it a build time dependency system. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to go and create a new package. We'll call it games. And I just want to go and kind of clone it from UI. So UI has got all the infrastructure that we need. So I'll go into the packages directory and then I'll do CP R for copy recursively and then start with the UI directory and create a new one called games. And games is going to hold all of our micro FEs, all of our games. So now I've got a new package called games. Let's go take a look in there. We got a package, call it games. All of this stuff with the TS up, that looks good. I don't think we need Zustand because that was for the core system. This is a dev, dev time dependency, so let's put that in here. Okay, and I think that's probably good. I think we also need Lodash, right? So we'll go into games and then we'll PMPM PM add Lodash. And now let's pull across the code. So card picker source, I'm gonna move card picker into games. And then over here in top number, I'm going to also bring in top number. All right, let's save a bunch of files here. Don't really worry about that for the moment. So this is how this is gonna work. We're gonna have this games MPM module and it's going to then feed into all of those apps. And so when I want to change a game, I've got to redeploy whichever apps use that game. So the next thing I want to remove shell and also remove that app shell. Let's just copy and paste from before into the index. I want to export from card picker and also from top number. Okay, and let's take a look. I think all of these are fine. Oh, we also need to bring in UI. So let's go over here to package and then bring in as a dependency UI from the workspace. Cool. All right, so that should be good. And now we need to go and start working on the consumer apps. So now we've got our games package. Now we need to consume it. So let's go over here to carb picker. And first thing we need to do is go into package. And just like we did with UI, we need to consume that games. So I'll put it under here, games. And over in the app.tsx, I'm going to bring in card picker from games. And I think the last thing I would need to do would be to get rid of this stuff. So let's just do module exports and give it a function that does pretty much nothing. Okay, let's go upgrade uh, game zone, similar sort of thing. So crack RC, let's get rid of that. In fact, let's do all the Cracko RC fixes right now. Just get rid of them all. Cool. Okay, that does that. And then we'll bring in our games. So up here, UI games. App.jsx, we get both of these top number and card pricker from games. And a cool thing here is because I now I'm sharing the TypeScript, I can turn that back into a TSX file. Cool, all right. And one more time, let's go into package.json down here and then bring in games. And we go over here to app.tsx and get it from games. Okay, let's try this out. So back on the top directory again, I'm going to do that PMPMI to get everything synced up. Let's see, seems to be happy. I like it. And we'll do PMPM dev and see if we're actually rocking and rolling. 
and it looks like we're good. Awesome. Okay, so now you've got a working example of both a build time dependency sharing using a mono repo of micro front ends to compare with a runtime sharing system. So that's why I went through the example of both of these. And I don't think there's a right or wrong answer here. This is a thing where you get to choose the tool based on the requirements in your environment. Do you need runtime sharing? Awesome. Module Federation exists. It's very easy to use, as you've seen, but there are some inherent risks with it. So I just wouldn't use that all the time. I would normally actually default to using build time sharing, which Turbo Repo makes incredibly easy, as you've seen, uh, as opposed to Module Federation. And then when I needed it, then I would go and use Module Federation and runtime dependencies. I find a lot of folks that ask me questions, think that module federation is the only way to do micro front ends. And if you've gotten that impression from me, I am sorry, I led you down a bad path on that. It is not the only way to do micro front ends. You can do build time dependencies, you can do runtime dependencies. So pick the right one, that's the right one for your application. And of course, all of this code is available to you on GitHub for free, so you can try it out for yourself and see which one you like and which one is the appropriate one for you. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and you've learned a lot about microfinance and how to do build time sharing and runtime sharing. If it helps you out, please let me know in the comments down below. If you have any questions, of course, put those also in the comments down below. And of course, in the meantime, if you like the video, hit that like button. And if you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.